Türkiye milli futbol takımı erkek bakım markası Jilet sunar. Sevgili izleyiciler, bugün asist analiz ekranlarında Euro 2024 röportajları için Düsseldorf'ta Almanya'da bulunuyoruz. Çok değerli bir konuğumuz var. Andreas Beck e, bizim talebimizi kırmadı. Andreas, I'm telling people that who is watching from Turkey that thank you so much. You accept our request and thank you so much having us today as an interview. So how is everything and what are you doing in Germany? Thank you for being invited and uh, I'm feeling good and healthy and fine. And um, I'm living very close to this place where we're meeting in yeah. Düsseldorf. I live in Belgium, so it's just 45 minutes from the border. And I'm here with my family, doing some stuff, Amazing. good weather, enjoying the city. So you are played, you achieved tons of goals in your career life and uh, before the retirement season. So you worked with, um, you played in Stuttgart, German national team and in uh, Bundesliga teams that you can actually tell us how was your football career and if you want to give a score like till 10 to 0 to 10 uh, how was your own actually uh, thoughts about your football career to rate my career i think it was uh, for me i made the maximum out of my career because i never thought i can be a professional player afterwards i became a professional player and when i was 17 18 Everything was like like a dream and almost 20 years I played on that level. So I enjoyed every moment. There have been good moments, but also very hard and tough moments when you're injured or not selected uh, for the squad. But it's part of the job and I loved it. I loved every minute. I would love playing until the end of my life, but everything comes in phases. So I'm good with uh, the retirement and now developing and going in the second career phase. How could you describe your career in Besiktas in Turkish Super League and how was the experience if you're comparing in Bundesliga and Germany? It was intense. It was uh, totally different. Uh, Bundesliga is uh, more structured. Uh, I was more in the in the system and what the coach uh, told me and what was the playing style. Turkey was wild, but in a positive way. It was with more emotions. It was uh, high level, very demanding to, because you have uh, the other teams like uh, Galatasaray, like uh, Fenerbahce, also Trabzon, Başakşehir during that time, which was not hard to beat, but uh, we could achieve two times uh, winning the title. So it was a great time. So Andreas, and uh, your, your, what was the last um, football club that you played in your career? And is there any unforgettable memory from that club? My last club was in Belgium. It was a small club, but uh, we played three years in the first league. It was Eupen, where I still live. Uh, we bought a house there. Yeah, memorable was uh, the time. It was during Corona. Oh. With, uh, It's yeah. harder, right? Yeah, it was, it was for me uh, a healthy decline in my career. So I can adapt to the end of my career with less fans, less media. Sometimes playing without uh, fans and media, but I enjoyed it so much. It was just pure football. So how was the relationship with Beşiktaş former players and your time? You have a close Turkish football player, friend, teammate? No, I, actually it's a very memorable time for me and uh, I'm still in touch with uh, many players. And like who? Oh, recently with uh, Cenk Tosun, with Gökhan Töre, with Atiba Hutchinson. Uh -huh. uh, um, Also, you follow on Instagram, you you write when there's birthday, they write to you and or when there is something personal and time time flies. People are in different positions, but still you remember these moments, this atmosphere. It was very successful for, for us, for Besiktas. So also with Willi Kaffler, with Dusko Tosic, you see them in Austria, you see them here in Germany in the stadiums and everyone is going his way but still close to football and everyone is remembering these great times we had. Is, there is something that fans, Besiktas fans are like really strong and strongly dedicated to their club. Have you ever have some memories or relationship with Besiktas fans and do they know you? For sure. Every week. Oh every week, God. almost every week. Still in touch. No, of course, in social media, um, most of my followers are, are Turkish, so I respect them a lot. I also write and post uh, many things in Turkish, but also here in, in Germany, oh, also, yeah. you know, here yeah, many Turkish people and uh, they recognize me and there's a lot of love. So we have a They great like, relationship. Hey, Andreas, oh, how are you, man? Yeah. Taking a picture. Yeah, it's like this. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. They don't forget. And also not only uh, Besiktas fans, all Turkish people. I have a very good relationship. I have a lot of friends, 
Turkish friends, so I love the country, I love the people. Hi, uh, and it's also, uh, is there any like memory with some Beşiktaş uh, fans? Like how you describe them? They're very rooted, like very passionate people. They love the game and they, they love like honest work. And I was never a, a player like Varejma or yeah. a striker who made a difference, but I was someone who worked for the team, who was very passionate to, to run, to fight, and they respected it a lot. So they gave also these people love, not only the superstars, but also the working players, the team players. And that's how I see also the club, like a working club, uh, uh, like I said, uh, a rooted club in the neighborhood, in the in Besiktas, in the country. And they, they have huge values and they respect the working class, the working people. And, Yes, that's maybe that's why thing. we linked also this a lot. Is yeah. Is there any chance and if you're in charge to change something in the club to get better, <laughs> what would you do? What would it be? <laughs> Actually, I don't think that I am in the position uh, to If you are in the position. If I am in the position, then I can uh, judge Take me as a then, <laughs> manager. <laughs> and then you have to do, but uh -huh. now I'm too far away to give uh, advice or something. I just can speak about the time when I was there. Speaking now, what I would change, I cannot do that. What do you think it's uh, when you were there, nothing goes well? There, if, if nothing goes well, when you were in, you know, the Besiktas, what was the reason? Is there any struggle that you've been in, in Besiktas when you were Actually, there? when I was there, we had quite uh, How was the relationship great success. <laughs> uh, it was great. It was great. He was like a teacher. When you come from Germany, the coaches are a little bit different, very tactical, very technical, very in the detail. And he saw always the big picture. Like uh, he, he told us mostly one week before, two weeks before, what will happen with the media, with the atmosphere around Besiktas. And that was sometimes more valuable than telling the people run left, run right. It was more about the atmosphere around the club around the media and he could uh, handle this very well and communicate it very well to us players like a more friendly way maybe right like a very experienced human being that's that's the that, that's what makes the difference actually yeah. that's how i experience him yes so andrea uh andreas yes. is it it's a uh, like russian i was like you know can you tell me your childhood when you oh. first play <laughs> football? Like, where, where did you start to play football? I was born in Russia and uh, 1990. Mm -hmm. uh, we came to Germany, so I was three years old. And I play football since I can remember it yeah. uh, because my brother is three and a half years older than me. So he always played. So you do what your big brother is doing. And that was the reason... Uh, it's like family me, heritage. Yes, and then it's like always the competition and you want to be also good, you want to be better. And How's yeah. your brother doing? He's good. He's an agent and he agent. he brought me to Besiktas also during awesome. that time. He lives in here? Germany? He lives uh, close to Stuttgart, yeah. Ah, awesome. Yeah, and the family is still living close to Stuttgart and that's all my memories. So how is the thing with UEFA right now? You started a, a program, uh, yes. as you said, you're studying. So why you retired, by the way, Andreas? What is the reason? Yeah, I retired when I was 35 years old and um, you feel it. You feel it in the body. I love the game still to this day, like I'm three years old, but you need more time to rest. You need more time to recover. And also when I was 35, I already had, I'm married, I have three children. And then oh, with- Oh, really? Yes. You look so young to have three children. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. But when you're 35, you will not sign a contract over two, three, four, five more years. And then you think about it. Okay, we feel fine there. They go to school, they go to kindergarten. Should I go for one more year abroad? What I'm doing with the family? It's not that easy anymore. And then we said, it's a good time to stop and to go to the second career path. And I was aiming for this course because I know this is a very high profile executive master at the UEFA. You had to be a national team player. You had to play in the UEFA Champions League. And then they teach you over two and a half years. Um, very good stuff. So when your, was your expectation after you uh, pass or you're done with this program, UEFA? Yeah, we will see after I have a very holistic overview over the football business, not only the coach or the player or the agent side, but also like the legal frameworks, the leagues, the, the clubs, the federations. Um. You want to come to Turkey? 
Maybe one day. Ma- Why like not? As a manager or something. We will see where my path will go. I never thought I would play in Turkey. I did. I never thought I would play in Belgium. If Fenerbahce li- or Galatasaray offers you to come <laughs> to here, come here to be our manager. No, I, I, I don't want to speculate. Oh, so, really? First of all, I need a qualification and I need to be good in what I do. Not only to have a name and to have credibility. That is also important mm-hmm. because we know the game, we know the business, we know we have the network. But also in position, you know how to play right defender. I know I have to know what is necessary to be in position, and that's what I'm learning now. Is the bad thing that Ardegüler is like so young? It's never a bad thing to be that young and that good is, and playing for the biggest team in the world. It's a huge accomplishment, and also now like a pressure maybe so much. Or... It's always pressure on the stage, and especially when you're that famous, that young. But as I said, it comes with the territory. If you are in a place playing for the biggest teams in the world, playing for Fener, then for Real Madrid, the pressure is on you. Do you have somebody in your mind, like so similar to Arda Güler, as career as age and like, you know, accomplishments and achievement like him in German, in Germany or the other clubs? Uzi was a kind of similar player, Mesut Uzi, also Mesut play, mm-hmm. playing then for Real Madrid, also left-footed, but comparing them now together is a little bit huge because Mesut Backed it up to having a world-class mm-hmm. career, being the player who made the difference in Schalke, in Bremen, in Real Madrid, in uh, Arsenal, and then having a huge career. So and Arda just started. Like, just started. Young, he just started, but in Real Madrid, like it's an but, amazing start. Yes, and like the huge yes. start. Andreas, you want to say something as a closing part to Turkey and the fans from Besiktas? You just want to. Deliver some message. But actually, we spoke before we we two, and I said uh, I, I loved being there. My daughter was born in in Istanbul. Oh, and yeah, yeah, half Amelie. Turkish. <laughs> yeah, kind of mm-hmm. blonde like me, oh, long hair. Yeah, and we speak a, a lot in the family about uh, Istanbul and Turkey. We and speak some Turkish words. Biraz, biraz konuşabilirim. Ama sadece ah, evet, evet. Çok güzel. İki sene öğrendim ya. Ah, ne güzel pronunciation. Teşekkürler. So good. Teşekkürler. Mesela böyle devam etsem devam edebilirim. Oh, yok, yok. O kadar da değil. My my Turkish is not good enough to to speak greetings so up, but I understand yeah. quite well. But great pronunciation, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. But it's already like six years ago when is I was there. Is that hard to uh, learn Turkish? Actually, w- learning the words was quite easy, you know, with the apps. But I had also lessons. I had also lessons with the teachers. And it is a little bit different because the grammatic is totally different than what we are used to here to German and English. And after one and a half, two years, I felt like I can speak. But maybe one more year, maybe I get this year in the future. I will speak Turkish. Good, very good. Amazing. Thank you so much Thank for you. for uh, having us, for saying uh, amazing, you know, interview. And your words are so valuable to us. Hope you're gonna make an interview with you, and hope you will be our guest in Istanbul. Why not? We would love to be Why so not? happy. And also Beşiktaş fan and in Turkey uh, also would be so happy to see you. Again. Thank you so much. Thank Sevgili you. izleyiciler, Asit Analiz ekranlarında Euro 2024 röportajları için Düsseldorf'tayız. Almanya'da konuğumuz Andreas Bekti. Kendisiyle çok şahane bir röportaj yaptık. Bir sonraki yayınımızda görüşmek üzere. Hoşçakalın. Türkiye Milli Futbol Takımı Erkek Bakım Markası Jilet sundu.